welcome and thank you so much for coming to this session um, with us today to talk about creating a perinatal um, improvement community. I'm Tasha Swinscoe, I'm the Chief Executive of the West of England Academic Health Science Network, but I also have the unenviable pleasure of being the Chief Officer Lead for the 15 AHSNs for um, patient safety. I've done that for four and a half years and I have got to say it is always the highlight of my week when I work with the patient safety collaboratives and, by, and people like these lovely ladies to my right. So I'm going to start off this morning by giving you a very, very brief introduction to um, the HSN network and the patient safety collaboratives and I'm going to hand over to these ladies who can tell you all about the fabulous work that we've been doing in the network and um, particularly across the southwest and the west of England. So patient safety collaboratives, if you don't know already, they are hosted by the AHSN network of networks. And our role there is to deliver quality improvement in collaboration with our ICSs. And we have been doing that for nigh on 10 years now. And we've got some great examples of success and spread. Our ambition in the network is to support the patient safety strategy, the national patient safety strategy, and we have an AHSN network plan, and one of the key lenses through which we look when we're choosing the work that we do as a national network of 15 AHSNs is patient safety and adoption of spread of innovation across our ICSs that improve patient safety and reduce harm and support our workforce. This is our driver diagram for our patient safety collaboratives. We are working with NHSI at the moment. They are our main commissioner for a lot of our patient safety work across the country. And we're working on five main programs of improvement. And they, are, um, they underpin the national patient safety strategy. And what we're gonna to talk to you about today is two of the programs that fit within the Matt Neo program of work. Um, we're gonna to talk to you about Periprem and Precept. And we're going to be focusing on um, how we are reducing outcomes, sorry, increasing outcomes and reducing harm for very premature babies. Both of these programs were born in the west of England, and there is a pun there. I hope somebody's noticed it. Um, one of them was then spread nationally across all 15 AHSNs, and Cara's going to talk to you about the success of that um, at the end of our presentation. And Periprem has been spread across the southwest and the west of England, and we've got some fabulous data that we're going to be sharing with you this morning to show you how quickly the patient safety collaboratives in those two regions have made such a difference to mums and babies at the front line. So, without further ado, that's my very brief introduction. I'm going to hand over to Sarah, who's going to talk to us about Periprem. Thanks very much, Tasha. So I'm Sarah Bates, and I'm an neonatal consultant from Swindon, but have spent the last two years being the Periprem operational clinical lead, and I'm also the national quality lead for perinatal medicine for BAPM. So um, Tasha's asked me to talk about Periprem, and I think what we need to remember is that we have this NHS long-term plan for NHS England to reduce death and brain injury. And, uh, in, in babies, and the vast majority of that um, is from the preterm population. The, um, the Periprem project was delivered in partnership with both AHSNs in our Southwest region and the Southwest Operational Delivery Network for neonatal critical care. So we have 12 provider trusts. We cover a population of around 44 um, a uh, population of around 5 million with around 44,000 births per year in our region. Periprem is quite an ambitious bundle. It contains quite a few elements of care that are already being reasonably reliably delivered, such as antenatal steroids, magnesium, a huge success from the Precept program. But it, it contains some other elements that were being very, very variably implemented, and I'll come to that shortly. The National Child Mortality Database, which is chaired by Karen, really highlights that if we want to tackle mortality and brain injury, we must address the lost in translation gap that we have in perinatal care. So we have a vast swathe of evidence showing what we need to do to reduce death and reduce brain injury, giving these babies the best chance at walking, talking, 
going to school and living the highest quality lives. And yet we aren't delivering these interventions reliably enough. And we're definitely not into uh, delivering these interventions as a bundle and across whole regions. We'll just go back a sec. The best way to describe Periprem is for you to hear the story from parents who have been through the Periprem program with their babies and whose babies have benefited from the program. Being a mother is just, it's just something I've always wanted. There's a lot of information out there and you talk to friends that have children and they give you their views on what it's like to be a mother. But when it comes down to it, you actually have no idea. I was scared, nervous, anxious, confused. Things went quite badly wrong at 29 weeks. Nothing could have prepared me for actually how terrifying those moments were. A lot of Googling on our phones, you know, survival rates, uh, health issues. Everything just went out the window. Everything we'd thought we were going to have and how we thought it was going to happen. Uh, we were just completely out of control. I remember receiving the Periprem passport um, quite early on. Um, that's when this, the Periprem care um, started right from the start. It was really helpful to just kind of have it laid out on the table. Here's what's happening and why. But I remember looking at it and referring to it. And I can see here, I don't know if you can see, that it's broken down into the relevant sections. It was nice because it prepared us for what we were inevitably going to see. Uh, the things that we were aware of straight away were they explained around the steroids. Um, I started on magnesium sulfate, which also was to help treat my preeclampsia. And at that point, my midwife helped me to hand express some colostrum ready for Georgia when she was born. I remember someone telling me about the plastic bag um, to, to keep them warm. The, the complete package with the parent passport and the clinical passport is just, it's excellent. Yeah, all these interventions are here to help your baby and you. Um, what does Popo mean to us? Um, what does Safe Adults Life? Yeah. Knowing the Periprem bundle was being used really helped us feel confident and supported. Everything that was outlined in the bundle that just helped show how closely all these different members of, of the team are working together to do everything they can to help your babies. Um, and I think it's just absolutely incredible. Thank you so much. So what's in the bundle? Um, I'm not going to go through all of the different elements, but this is the 11 element bundle. The National Maternity and Neonatal Safety Program has seven of these elements, but we've got the additional four elements in the Southwest. And just to highlight perhaps one of the elements in particular is optimal cord management. This is just waiting 60 seconds after a preterm baby is born before we clamp the umbilical cord, something fairly simple but that is associated with a near 30% reduction in death. But when we look at the national data, the average for, for implementation of this intervention is 29%. So just let that sink in. Two thirds of the babies across England and Wales are missing out on an intervention that has a 30% reduction in mortality. And when we saw the national data looking at this regionally, there are some regions which are only doing this 6% of the time. And in the Southwest, even in 2020, just at the start of Periprem, we were already above 60%. And in March of this year as a region, we were 94%. So that just shows you what Periprem can deliver. So the parents referred to the passport. So we have a clinical passport for every lady at risk of preterm delivery across the Southwest. But we also, the parent partners that worked such an integral part of the steering group that worked on Periprem with us, really emphasized the importance of having a parent held passport, which is translated into lots of different languages. And we made all the resources free and open access and in my national quality lead role, I know that many, many teams around the country are already downloading and trying to use some of the resources to really support their optimization journey. 
This really was more than just about the numbers, though. It's about creating this really strong culture change across the Southwest. We've stopped viewing it as being a neonatal team's responsibility to deliver the outcome for the baby and the obstetrician's role as looking after the mother to becoming a strong perinatal team with a shared responsibility of achieving that goal. So in the Southwest, unlike many of the other regions across the UK, Periprem has put us on track to meet the long-term plan ambitions. But I definitely see now, as I work with teams across the country, that they really need this, the resources and the support that came with um, Periprem, the coaching, the teams in each of the 12 units across the region to be able to deliver the kind of change that we've delivered in the Southwest. Now I'm going to pass you over to Hayley to talk a little bit more about the evaluation. Thank you, Sarah. Um, as I said, my name's Hayley McBain. I'm one of the evaluation leads based at the Southwest AHSN. Um, and we were commissioned to conduct an independent evaluation of Periprem. Um, the evaluations that we do at the Southwest not only focus on the impact of the innovations and interventions that we support and deliver, but look to understand how we achieve that change. Uh, so we can understand implementation processes and the barriers and enablers to implementation so that we can develop guidelines and recommendations for future spread and adoption. Um, so this is the lens that we took to this evaluation, um, uh, bringing a behavioral science um, uh, methodology to the approach. Um, to look at, at the effectiveness of using that quality improvement methodology alongside a structured and supportive approach to implementation provided by the AHSN and the um, Periprem team. Um, it was a mixed methods evaluation, so we looked to understand the impact of um, the approach in relation to the quantitative data, so looking at adherence to the bundle elements as a whole and each of the individual uh, interventions. Um, we also looked at perinatal team culture um, in looking at uh, staff surveys over the implementation phase um, and that was supplemented by qualitative interviews with staff delivering Periprem on the ground, um, our Periprem leads in each of the units and our quality improvement coaches at the HSNs. And that was to explore the barriers and enablers to implementation and then the behaviour change techniques used by staff to increase uh, adherence to the bundle elements. Um, and that was in order for us to develop recommendations about future spread and adoption of Periprem, but also translate some of that learning across into the optimization bundle um, as part of the Mac Neo SIP as well. So as I said, this was a mixed methods evaluation um, and we conducted a range of different analysis. This uh, analysis here focuses on the changes from data back in 2019 compared to the end of the evaluation period uh, in 2021. And over that, uh, uh, we also conducted analysis looking at the implementation phase specifically um, with very similar results. So I'm gonna focus on that change from 2019 today. Um, over the evaluation period, um, 693 babies were born. Um, that number has increased substantially since then. Um, but if we just look at the table and focus on some of the elements of the bundle, um, we can see from that top line, there was a tenfold increase in the percentage of mothers who were receiving all eligible elements of the bundle. Um, and that was uh, statistically significant changes. When we look at the 11 elements individually, 10 of them improved, and of those 10, eight were statistically significant changes. Um, if we look at the most, um, the biggest increases around early breast milk, probiotics, prophylactic hydrocortisone, um, place of birth, antenatal steroids, these all increased by over 30%. Um, so really fantastic results in a really quite short space of time. Um, a project that was operating in quite complex and challenging time, uh, right bang in the middle of the pandemic. Uh, these, as, as mentioned already, uh, this is a complex bundle. Bundles, uh, as, as they increase in size, uh, we often find that adherence rates uh, actually drop. So considering this is significantly larger than most care bundles, we had some really fantastic results. I might have to use that. Oh, here we go. Try this. 
There we go, fixed it. <laughs> um, so how do we achieve that, uh, that change? Um, and that was the focus of the qualitative work and the surveys that we conducted. Um, so we looked at this uh, analysis using a uh, behavioral science um, lens. So we used the COMBI framework for behavior change to understand what the barriers and enablers were. Um, so that states that uh, a behavior is a consequence of a person's capability, their motivation and opportunity. Um, so just looking at some of the, the facilitating factors, um, the surveys indicated there were significant improvements in staff's knowledge and skills around using QI methodology, and they felt they had the confidence to really introduce change. Um, we also saw uh, their knowledge and skills increase in relation to the bundle elements. So um, staff, periprem leads on the ground, really spent time creating innovative ways of delivering that education and knowledge. Um, they broke the bundle down. It is a large bundle, and they used their data to understand where they should focus their efforts. Um, and it, it may be those that it, it could have been those that they were doing particularly poorly at, or those that they thought there was quick wins, but they were doing those quick wins alongside the more complex bundle elements as well. So it gave them that motivation and, um, and made it much more achievable. Um, we looked at motivation. So um, uh, the staff were really motivated, as um, Sarah has always touched on the evidence base around each of the individual elements. Each element has a strong link with mortality and brain injury. Uh, this was really emphasized in all of the share and learn sessions and all of the materials that were uh, are freely available. Um, and that built trust um, and enabled Periprem to become a recognizable brand. So the branding that was created was used throughout the units to prompt and remind staff about the bundle elements, um, and along with the clinical team, and the, uh, uh, that really enhanced the trust that uh, unit staff had in the bundle itself. Um, and as rooted in QI methodology, people were using their data to really understand the impact of their change ideas, and that really motivated them when they saw those positive changes happening. Um, in terms of staff opportunities, um, as I said, they use those cues within units to prompt delivery of the bundle elements, um, and then bringing teams together at a regional and uh, unit level to really think about those change ideas um, and see their data change. So those share and learn sessions were really important uh, chance for share, to share ideas, share learning, both positive and, and negative, and, and kind of learning from each other throughout the region. The backfill and protected time was really important to get that buy-in at a trust level, um, and staff really needed that time to deliver the bundle elements and to develop um, their change ideas with their teams. Um, and as Sarah has already touched on, the uh, resources available through the Periprem Passport um, uh, were really important parts of, uh, and these, these resources were adaptable at the unit level, so they could use them, change them, and then they shared those ideas through, through the share and learn sessions. Um, and then the QI support that was offered by the AHSN. So that tailored um, support that the QI coaches gave was really important to increase those knowledge and skills and give staff confidence around their abilities to deliver the project. And then finally, having that strong peri-prem lead within the units. Um, they needed to have a change mindset. They needed to have strong leadership skills. Um, but it was thought to a combination of those frontline staff and more senior uh, staff were a good combination uh, to have. And the qualita uh, quantitative survey data also showed there was significant improvements in team function and communication. Um, so those are some of the facilitating factors. Um, we have some publications coming out in the not too, too distant future, which should give you a bit more uh, detail about those. But um, that is a very brief summary. I'm going to pass over to Karen, who's going to speak about Precept. Thanks, Hayley. So lovely to see you here this afternoon. Um, I'm a clinical neonatologist in Bristol and a professor of neonatal medicine. And I was the uh, national clinical lead for Precept and strategic lead for Periprem. Now, being born very early is the single biggest cause of cerebral palsy and of child mortality. And that's worldwide, developed and developing world. So it's everybody's business. Who of you have heard of the Precept program? Some hands up. Some of you have even worked on the Precept program. I know, great. So this was a program um, implemented by the Academic Health Science Network, um, a perinatal program 
basically supporting people to give a drug magnesium sulfate. And if you give that to a mum in preterm labor, it reduces cerebral palsy by 30%. For every 37 mothers you treat, you can prevent one case of cerebral palsy, so a very effective drug, yet it wasn't being given. It's also a very cost-effective drug. It only costs one pound, so it's not an expensive drug, and yet it wasn't uh, widely in use in 2018. This program implemented magnesium sulfate. It was a very ambitious program. It went for every trust in the country in England, over 150 units. And in two years, we implemented magnesium sulfate, and we got the rates up to 85%. The, 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 this is the fastest a new treatment's ever been implemented in perinatal care at a national level. So this shows you what where we came from. So 2016, 54% average uptake of magnesium sulfate. This is where the program went in, and you can see we went up to 85% by the end of the program. Then the pandemic hit us, and look what's happened in that two-year pandemic period. We've stayed right up there at 85%. So this is the biggest test ever, I think, of, of sustainability of a program, and it showed that it's been sustained. And the bottom line is that the variability between the regions has, has improved. So there was a 40% range between 37% in the worst regions and 79% in the best when we started. And by the end of 2021, we were at a range of 80 to 92%, so only 12% variability remaining. Of course, that can still improve, I believe. Uh, but what that means is our poorest regions in the Marmot report, the four, the four um, most deprived regions in England had the worst magnesium sulfate uptake in 2016 of the 15 regions. And by the end of this program, everyone's tightly together. So that is an example of how you can reduce health uh, inequity, the prime example, by, by giving universal support to every single hospital to bring in an you know, evidence-based intervention. And then the, the impact, I mean, this it goes up every day because it's still being given, but uh, when we were made this slide, it was 10,700 mothers treated since 2018 when the program started. If you translate that into ca uh, ca cases of cerebral uh, CP prevented, it's about probably 300 now. And that is an estimated um, co cost saving to health and social care of 230 million pounds for a program that cost about a million. So massive return on investment. So building on precepts, so, so what, what, what were the lessons we learned? The one thing I think we learned was, and this was a leap of faith when we did it, is that actually the AHSNs and the neonatal delivery networks map perfectly, almost perfectly. And so what we did is we used these two structures and made them work together essentially. And the AHSN supported the neonatal and maternity networks to deliver this intervention. And this makes it really, really cost effective. So Precept, as uh, we've done the health economics, is a dominant economic strategy. It means it actually saves money, it doesn't cost money in the long, in the long term. We also have built, uh, we've, we've nurtured innovation and capacity, and we've built capacity by investing in every perinatal team in the country. That means they're ready to take on the next um, bundle, which I hope will be Periprem, because that's ready to go. And I believe Periprem has got even greater potential to reduce brain injury and, and reduce mortality. And I say that because in the Southwest, we've done the analysis, so we've looked at Baseline data, 2014 to 2019, and then 2020 is the implementation year for Periprem. And what we can see is we've reduced severe brain injury uh, by a third. This is a massive size effect, effect size. And mortality by a quarter. And what that means is the Southwest is on track to meet the NHS long-term plan ambition to reduce both these outcomes by 50% in 2025. If we think if we scale this up nationally, what would it mean? It would mean 340 fewer preterm brain injury cases per year, and that's cerebral palsy. And that would mean 220 fewer infant deaths per year. That's the bottom line. And if we don't implement Periprem and we don't, don't take this forward and we wait another few years, it means there will be 340 more cases than we need of babies' brain injury and 220 more babies dying that need to be. Um, and I'm very happy uh, to take questions.